Let's start with the layout of the keypad. The keypad is divided into three regions. The top section contains the navigation keys. Let's start with the home key. It's also the on and off key for your calculator. If you press the home key, you return to the home screen. Much the same as the home button on an Android phone or swiping up on an iPhone or pressing Windows and D on a computer. The large button is the navigation pad. You can arrow left, right, up or down. But you can also use it as a touchpad. The mouse is designed to hide away when it's not being used. To wake it up, just swipe your finger across the touchpad a couple of times. The centre of the touchpad can also be used to select objects by simply pressing down briefly or clicking. If you hold it down for a second or two, you can also grab items. We'll practice this later. The escape key is located in the top left corner, just the same as a computer keyboard, and serves much the same purpose. If you find yourself in a menu and want to back up, just press the escape. You'll also notice the tab key. Its location and function is similar to that on a computer. The tab key can be used to navigate menus and environments quickly and easily. In between the escape and tab keys is scratchpad. If at any time you just want to do a quick calculation or graph, just press the scratchpad key. The scratchpad environment doesn't have all the features of the calculator or graph applications, but it's great for a quick calculation or graph. And to get out of scratchpad, well, just press escape. Finally, the document menu keys. We will explore these in more detail once we launch into one of the applications. The second group of keys contains many of the more familiar features of a scientific calculator. Things like sine, cosine, tan, and all their inverse operations. All of these are accessed from just the trig key. Logarithms, exponentials, brackets, parentheses, fractions, they're all located in this center section of the keyboard. The variable key is a bit like the memory recall on a scientific calculator. But with TI Inspire, you have a lot more options for variables. They could be a single value, list of values, an equation, matrix, or many of the other variables that you can store. The third group of keys focuses mainly on letters, symbols, and punctuation. The symbols can also work as operators. For example, the exclamation symbol, you can use it in text, or you can use it to calculate the factorial of a number. The same is true for things like percentages, degrees, and radians, and more. You'll also notice that many of the keys have a blue annotation above them. These are like the second function keys on your calculator. You press control followed by the required button. Unlike a computer, you do not need to hold down both keys at the same time. You can do them sequentially. Now for the home screen. It too is divided into three regions. On the right hand side, we see the document options, which include things like launching a new document, browsing your files, access to a recent document, or jump to the current document or adjust to settings. The bottom of the screen contains the commonly used applications like calculator, graphs and geometry, lists and spreadsheets, data and statistics, notes, and the Vernier Data Quest app. Finally, on the left hand side, we see the temporary environments. Most of the time these consist only of the scratch pads, calculate and graph options. However, if your school is using a wireless navigator system, you may find a poll or question in there from time to time sent to you by your teacher. So let's take a moment to practice using some of these keys. From the home screen, select new. I'll press the one key on the keyboard. I had a document open that I don't need anymore. So I'll press the tab key to navigate to No and press Enter. I want to draw a graph, so I'll use a down arrow key on the navigation pad and then click to select Graphs application. The graph entry line is displayed automatically. 
I'll graph y equals x squared. x is amongst all the letters, followed by the squared key amongst all the maths keys. Then press Enter. Now it's time to use the touchpad. Swipe your fingers across the touchpad until the mouse pointer is over the graph. Notice that it changes to a two-way arrow. And a text tip pops up saying Graph F1. Click and hold the centre of the touchpad to grab the curve. Notice now that the mouse changes to a closed hand. Swipe your finger across the keypad to dilate the function. To release the grip, press Escape or just click again. Now move the mouse down to the turning point. Notice that this time the mouse changes to a set of crosshairs. The text tip Graph 1 reappears. This time I'll press CTRL and then click. This has the same effect as holding down the mouse pad and press Escape to release the graph. If I want to put it back, I can undo all of these movements by just pressing CTRL followed by ESCAPE or CTRL Z. Press the TAB key again and the graph entry line reappears. This time I'll enter the function y equals x. Try grabbing the linear function and moving it around the screen. Watch the text tip to make sure you know which graph you're grabbing. That's all for this session. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.